we're going to think about the gospel purifies. The gospel purifies. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Uh, for you know what com commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. So that was uh, important to them now as they gone from telling them about how they preached the gospel and how they came to faith in Christ and how they were walking and different things. But he's gone on now to challenge them how they ought to walk and to please God. Uh, that was very important, you see, for them. And of course, the whole thing about there is, doesn't a, a walking mean progress? That's important that you are walking in the Christian life, that you are making progress. You know, if you're standing still, uh, you know, it's serious. Um, you know, standing for the Lord is good, but uh, to stand still, uh, and it's so easy to go back and to not make the progress. So we need to be making progress in our lives. That's very important. Uh, and it's because the gospel purifies, isn't it? Uh, if you wanted to go to the top of Mount Everest, how would you do it? You just say, well, you know, I'll, 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 I'll uh, stay down here at base camp and I'll enjoy my time and it'll be fine. I'll get there all right, you know, and I have a good time and, and all that, you see, at base camp. And, and not worry about climbing up, not worry about preparing for, to get to the summit. Because there is great preparation, isn't there, to reach the summit of Mount Everest. And those who have endeavoured to do that, it was a great cost and, and great challenge and, and very difficult for them to get there. But of course, they have mastered it, they have managed to, uh, to, to get there. And it is amazing that even the highest mountain in the world, that... Uh, the valleys in the sea are even lower and deeper than that. It is climbing to the top. That's what God wants us. And that's what they planned. That was their great plan. To reach to the top and to, uh, whoever is this flag here, uh, to, to raise the flag, you see, for their country. And, uh, and uh, to... There they are. They have reached about the summit. And... Uh, and the whole preparation is, is for that, isn't it? To get there. The whole preparation is to reach the summit that we are a aiming to go for. And Paul said that he was, he was wanting to win the prize and the upward call. That, that summit uh, was, of course. And he said he hadn't yet attained, but he was pressing on. And, and we must take encouragement from the great Apostle Paul. Yet amazing what he says, but it's all because it was challenging for the Philippians and the challenge it is here for the Thessalonians. Tell it the challenge for us individuals today too. So the gospel purifies. See, I am making all things new. That's the summer, you see. That's the future, that's the hope. Everything new. Won't have to worry about the Eighth Amendment then. You won't have to worry about the uh, whatever it is, uh, you know, being taken to court, uh, all that sort of thing, uh, there will be no more because everything will be new. There will be no sin. There will be nothing to, uh, to separate us from God. No challenges, no problems, no difficulties. See, I am making all things new. And that is what we are aiming for. And that is what we are going for, haven't we, in this life. And, and that is the great thing. And we're not to give up on it. It's a battle, isn't it? There are many challenges along the way. And remember that. It can be difficult. It can be not easy. But there it is. Uh, we've seen all those things in our family circle uh, happening, you know. And it is not easy. But there it is, he says. See, I am making all things new. And we have to keep that in mind. That is new with a capital N, you know. Right. That's the term. I don't know how we get over that. So the gospel purifies. Really, justification is the base camp. 
That's where you're starting at the really beginning is when we come to be justified freely by God's grace through Christ Jesus and his great work and we come to that point that we can uh, follow him and that we are uh, declared in the right with God. Or that is the main thing you see about it. Now, let's go on from there. And so there is a warning, isn't there, in that, you know. And what is the warning? Well, the warning is, well, it's, it's great to be saved, isn't it? And satisfied with your salvation. But there's possibility of getting stuck in it. And getting no further, not making the progress, not walking on with the Lord, you know, well enough, keeping close to Him. That's the great challenge. That is the challenge. The sin. It's this great warning that comes up before us, and uh, and uh, and we have to have this warning coming up to me all the time, you know, and I can't do much about it. Uh, but it's uh, the important fact is to be to be really challenged. The Thessalonians are challenged that. We can be saved, and that's wonderful. So I were saved, and and satisfied with the salvation, but they were stuck in different ways. There were problems of uh, if my friends died, and uh, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't hear for the resurrection. They would miss out on that. Well, they didn't, they didn't really think about a resurrection. They thought they were going to be uh, lost. You know, that was it. You're, you're dead. You're gone, and that was it. You know. Uh, and so, uh, uh, but sanctification really is the summit, isn't it? Verse 3 there, um, sanctification is the summit. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. And so, from this is the will of God, your sanctification. And sanctified means is to be set aside for God, that you commit your life to him, you're going to follow him, and it is... Uh, uh, holiness to the Lord is to follow him in, in your life and making progress in the Christian life. Right. And, uh, and the progress is um, pressing on the upward way. I'm sure you heard of, uh, maybe heard of this hymn. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward, I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. And that is the great thing, to plant our feet on the higher ground, because it's the higher ground we're going for, the higher spiritual ground, the higher plane, not satisfied with just the little things, the little tidbits, you know. Uh, I know the lady was so excited about the crumbs from the table, you know. Oh, even the dogs leap to get the crumbs from the children's table. You know. And uh, so... She said, Jesus says, for that saying, God, the devil is gone from your daughter. You know. So there it is. So the historical situation we'll think about, you know, for a bit here. The historical situation, as I reminded uh, before, that... Uh, in the Roman world, it was a sad world. There was no, uh, there wasn't. It was a great, difficult world for women and for children. And uh, a, a father would not accept his son uh, as uh, as his. He wouldn't accept his son, his his uh, uh, own bar, son, born of the flesh. Uh, he he. It would be later on. He'd be left with a child minder to to mind the child, and then later. Uh, that person would uh, prepare him, and he may accept his son then, adopt him then as his son. Uh, but he could adopt a slave either. But there it is. You see that comes up uh, somewhat in uh, a... I forgot the film now. It doesn't come to me. Ben-Hur. But... Uh, uh, so... Uh, Greece was once a pagan culture. So they may be back to that again, you know, but it was paganism. It was all that, you see, just the same as uh, we think of Halloween and all those things too as well. And so a man could have a wife for legitimate offspring and also a mistress 
etc. Of course. And then of course there was the temple prostitutes too as well. And prostitution and cult prostitution was uh, in vogue. And, uh, and they, they could uh, have uh, uh, mixed there with uh, the same as it happens in Jehovah, uh, different, um, uh, what, say, oh, if, uh, to a young girl, oh, if you have sex with me, uh, that means you will get to heaven, you will be saved, uh, and that sort of thing. And, and they use certain ideas like that, you see, you know. So it's, but what does Jesus say? That is the main thing, is we have to hear what he says. And we have to follow God's word. And it's so difficult for young people today, you know, when I hear about the things that are happening and what's on uh, coming across on the text messages and the, um, the websites and, and different things like that. And, uh, you know, you need to turn a blind eye to those things and not allow it into you or it would only just destroy you. Uh, so Jesus reminded us, of course, of God's word, didn't he, in Genesis 2.24. Genesis 2.24, and he's, he, Jesus, answered and said to them, that was to the Pharisees, of course, and Sadducees, and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That is the most amazing thing, isn't it? And that is really the big effort, the big thing of all, is the joining and the bringing together one flesh, one person. It's, it's not good mathematics, but it's really one plus one equals what? One. It's the completion of a person uh, uh, before God. And, uh, and the, the two together really, uh, you know, make, uh, qualify to make a complete uh, person uh, working together. Uh, and that's a big issue. Uh, and that's something to, to work out. That's not easy. Uh, because, but it, it's necessary under God's plan. It's necessary to really work at it, but uh, it's, not ha it's not easy. So, the Christians, they were to abstain from sexual immorality, verse 3. They were to, that wasn't to be part of their uh, way. Right? That each of you should know how to, why was it, you see, so that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. When he talks about the body, he talks about it's a vessel. Our bodies are made by God, given by God, and it's so very important to understand that. And it's so very important that all the things that we do and all the things that happen is a gift from God. So I have no, I have no uh, qualms about saying that sex is a gift from God to be used in God's way. Uh, only in God's way and in God's corner to God's commandment. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification, uh, set, it, set aside and used for God and honour. Not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That was the world they were living in. That was the Gentile culture. That was the situation that we are coming back to in, in our land today and in our world. And it's so very important to, to uh, be prepared for that. How should we check a soulmate? How do you check a soulmate? Because a soulmate is one that's going to be one with you. Not easy. It's very difficult. There can be many mistakes. And, and it, but it's very important to check out a soulmate. Um, you know, in the world then, women and children were taken advantage of. And, and they were just a part of furniture or chattels. Uh, as I said, the woman just to provide offspring for the man. Uh, and that's all he, was, he had of her, you know. And, and there was no concern. 
And when the Apostle Paul was bringing this in, you know, he was saying to husbands, love your wives. Interesting to the Ephesians, he didn't say, wives, love your husband. They were to reference them. But husbands, and why was that, you see, because we are taking the lead role and we are to love our wives as Christ has the challenge. And that's self-sacrificial love. And there's so much in the Bible about that. And it really means, I say it's one of the biggest challenges. I'm not perfect. I, I fail in many ways and you may have to ask Rita about that, you know. And so, you know, a, a believer was not to, in, in verse 5 there, you see, take advantage of and defraud his brother. That's what it would be, take advantage of or defrauding. And, uh, and if, if uh, someone has sex with someone else, that's what it really entails. And if it's happening in the church, then it's terrible, isn't it? And there is no doubt that uh, the Christian church is affected by this. And it's not, uh, it's not uh, something that we, we can uh, say, oh no, it's not, it doesn't affect us. It does. We have to be careful, don't we? And so it's uh, part of Paul's gospel message, it must have been. He must have been teaching them about that there in verses 6 and, uh, and 7. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also warned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness, to live holy lives. And it's great, isn't it, you see, that all these things that we face, uh, and they make a big issue about different things, but you see, they're all sins before God. And, it's, and God is the one who, who uh, forgives and restores people. And, and, uh, and uh, the great thing is the reconciliation that God holds and the rebuilding and the restoring of lives in all this is so very important. I must emphasize that, that that's very important. And, and uh, it was part of Paul's message here because they were all affected with it. They came from that culture. And uh, we're getting very close to that kind of culture again, you know. And so it's important today, isn't it? It's important to think upon these things and to apply these things. And to face up to God's word. And, uh, and I'm really challenged for young people today. And how they're going to face these things in their colleges and the universities and the different places. You're going to have to face this issue. And, and uh, how will you do it? You'll only by the help of God. And crying out to him, you know. You know, when I hear about the things that happen, I think it's most desperate. Uh, you know, some of the things we have for using our uh, PCs and, and uh, different things, and mobile phones are great, but there's problems on there because you get too much of the world in there. And it can affect you in a great way. We do need Christians who can do uh, good, make good Christian games, and that would be important. Now, when we're talking about marriage, we're talking about husband and wife. We must also remember that in the church, we have to be very careful because, but a person can be complete as one, and that too. Is, God, is a God-given gift. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? To be complete as one. A person, a Christian can be a complete as one. A complete person. Normally we are made to have a companion. Sir Adam had a companion. He had Eve, you know. He found a helpmate, a suitable helper for him. Uh, and that was, yes, important. But that's not the all thing, you see. And, and, uh, and of course, uh, the important thing is that we know our situation. And if a person is complete as one, then uh, I know um, at college there was two people who decided 
at the end of the college course to, to get married. And of course, they realized within a month or so that they were not suitable for one another. And that really, in the end, marriage wasn't for them. I think neither of them got married again, you know, because they were found out. They were complete as one. They didn't need that, uh, uh, you know. Uh, and I, maybe not explaining it well enough uh, for you, but it's that basically uh, it was a God-given gift. And they, they didn't realize it, but uh, there it was, and they suddenly just got married. So, praise for Brother Leila. He really praises them, doesn't he, in verses uh, 9 and part of 10. For what thanks can we render to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before God? Night and day praying exceedingly that, you may, that we may see your face. And so it's, he first of all praises the for the brotherly love that's amongst them. And how that is growing and going on more and more. Yes, it was there at the beginning, and he's still emphasizing that it's very important. And you know, what is it we are to do? We are to spur one another on to love and good works. We, we, we have looked at that in, in where? In Hebrews, didn't we? And so much more as you see the day approaching. Uh, and the meeting of together is so important because that's the only meeting, you see, where kindred spirits, where people meet together as one and, and, and iron out these problems, you know, and face them, you know, uh, logically and properly and, and in a Christian manner, they can be faced and dealt with, you know, uh, very important. And it's no way to play God on top of anybody or, to, or, or wonder what these things can be. They're very important. They're very challenging. Uh, and it's, it's really knowing God's direction and God's help. And of course, we are then to spur one another on to this love and good deeds. And, uh, and that's what uh, a, a Paul is doing with these Thessalonians. And, of course, warned about their testimony. Their great testimony is important to have. A good testimony before all there, you know. So they were taught by God to love one, and indeed you do so, toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. So they were, but a great testimony to the whole area round about, that Greek-speaking world, that, Greek, that part of Greece, you know. And it's quite wonderful, it's quite important, isn't it? I, I know it is a challenge. I know uh, we are often challenged and we have to bear a good testimony. And so he spells it out in verses 11 and 12. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love toward one another and to all, just as we do to you. And so there it is, isn't it? What? In simple words, it's spelled out, isn't it? It's quite challenging there, and, and there is no way around it. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, in any way, but it's as they're working together, as they're understanding this, you see, and I know so much in the Church of God today, and in, in the world then, and in whatever it is, but Paul is very, very uh, emphatic about it. There is no room for playing God. There's no room for taking, uh, you know, to overcome and to, 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 to do God's work. God is working, and his purpose is that is the establishing, the rebuilding, and the remaking and restoring. When we read in the Bible about those people who are restored, we wouldn't have the great messages. And talk of, how would you think, you see, about, see, you think about King David. And you think about the blind man who said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. How would, how could a 
curse and say that and say, look at what I've done, he done. And yet, there was forgiveness. And yet, as he came before God, God renewed him and remade him. And he come to understand how he was made and his sexual urges, you know, and all that sort of thing had to be understood fully. And he began to see, you know, God's plan and, and the restoration that was so necessary for him, you know, that was so important. And so, you know, and when this uh, blind man could say, Jesus, son of David. There was no doubt, you see. He was in the line of David. And there was David as much a believer as any one of us. You know. And yet, uh, and when we read other things in the Bible, it's just amazing. He's a God of great mercy. He's a God of love. He's a God of compassion. He's a forgiving God. He's a restoring God. He's a reinstating God. You know, when you think about Peter and what he did, how he could restore Peter, you know, who denied his Lord, denied him with oaths and curses. You know, and, Peter, and Jesus looked at him, he looked on Peter, and he prayed for him, you know. That was the great thing, wasn't it? So it's, it's really spelled out there to them, you know, what they're to be. Why walking properly? Well, it's walking in the faith, learning to walk. There were, there, were, there were babes in Christ. They had to learn about these things. They had to learn about their life. They had to learn about the way, the whole culture that they were in, you know. And that's the way it is now. And there we have a, a Christian family having to stand for the Lord in, in, in our culture, in our world. And, and to say you know, that they are standing. It's God's law, it's God's rule, and we can't go against that. And to, to go against conscience or that is not right or safe, as someone else has said. So, it's working properly, isn't it? It's working according to how God directs us. It's learning that. And it's working, and then we're to work. Uh, we maybe deal with this a bit more again, but uh, they were to work. You know, the problem really with the Thessalonians was they were going to be giving up on work. And they were going to be uh, uh, living up one another. And try, some of them were doing that, you see. Why? Well, of course, Jesus is coming again. He might come tonight. There's no point in working, no point in doing anything. Well, we we'll, 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 we we expect him coming again, and and that's it, you see. And so uh, they were given up working. They were given up these things, and uh, because they expected, yes, of course, that was the challenge in the Bible that uh, we expect Jesus to come at any time, and and uh, and they were like that. And why lacking nothing? Again, we might deal on this a bit more, but. Uh, um, of course, uh, as we take in the gospel, as we learn more about God, it's then we're getting stronger. And he didn't, Paul didn't want them to lack anything. But he wanted them to be uh, strong in the Lord and his power and uh, uh, to not lack uh, anything at all, you know. It's quite, quite amazing. So that you may walk properly towards those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. And so, that's the gospel, you see. It brings those things to us, you see, in this, in this real depth. And so that we, not lacking spiritual growth and the spiritual word that will build you up and to give you a, a place amongst those who are sanctified. And give you a shoot, assurance and a hope and a blessing, you see. That's what God is in the midst of doing, you see. And growing and building people up. And restoring uh, people. As I said already, 
It has happened so often in the Bible times. It will happen so often in our time. Well, yes. and, uh, and we still have a God who, who really loves us. And he doesn't want to lack those spiritual benefits and those blessings. You know, as we go on to look at this more, we may try, we may come back on that again. Uh, we're leaving it now, you know, but we're thinking particularly how the gospel purifies. And, uh, and it's so wonderful, isn't it? Because it's to purify our lives, it's to take the dross out, it's to take the old, uh, the old ideas and the old life away and to give us there that new life in Jesus Christ. That blessings that are ours in Christ Jesus. Oh, I know it's, it's not easy. And oh, I know that people go through amazing and very difficult situations. And the only one who can take you through that is the Lord. The only one who can direct you and help you through that is the Lord. And that is the great thing. And so, the whole thing for Christians is, do we have some effect on society? And so, I would have said, the greatest testimony in our land today is the testimony of the <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. MacArthur. And as they stood side by side, and as they proclaimed their position and, and belief in God and in his word, it was just so amazing to see it. And that is really uh, showing you how the gospel purifies and blesses and encourages and we need to hold on to that. We maybe need to get in again a restoring grasp of that, friends. That's what will build families and lives. And that's what will restore, uh, you know, us to, to where we should be. And I know we fail far short of it, but we need the strength and help and the blessing that will only come from God. So thank you. And uh, sorry. Uh, in many ways, we haven't really done justice to the passage. Uh, but as, as you see there, before God, you know, God's direction and God's help and God's blessing. Our gracious God, we pray that you will guide us as we face our land and this world and all the difficulties that, we, that are there. We pray, Lord, you will lead and guide by your Holy Spirit. We pray, O oh Lord, your blessing. And we ask, Lord, that you will just strengthen and guide us <coughs> as we live in this world and as we give an answer of the hope that is within us with meekness and godly fear. We pray, Lord, that you will guide. We pray, Lord, that you will direct. We pray, Lord, that you will come in, in your mercy. Because as we're reminded today already at another time that we have a merciful God, we have a great God, we have a God who is concerned to come to us uh, at our uh, uh, point of need. So we thank you, Lord. We can bring our prayers and requests before your throne of grace. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen.